Howdy folks, John here. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to change a LiPo connector on a LiPo battery safely. Now, the usual two reasons that force you to change a connector on a LiPo are one, the connector gets worn out from usage, you know, carbon pitting, it gets loose, whatever the reason. Or two, your new battery doesn't come with the uh, right connector that uh, you primarily use, which is exactly the case with these new Genzase packs I just purchased. As you can see, they come with an EC5 connector and I like uh, XT90 connectors for uh, this current rating. So just thought while I'm changing these connectors, I would cover the process as it's something I get asked about often. Let's get started. Now this has nothing to do with changing the connector, but whenever I get a new LiPo pack, which is the case here, I just want to make sure it's the exact one that I ordered. And yes it is. And I also like checking the um, storage voltage that it was shipped in, just to make sure everything's good. Gen's Ace are always on the mark. 49% uh, storage state, perfect. You know, all the cells are nicely balanced up. So we're looking good there. Now I have several videos on uh, changing different connector types and they can all be accessed through my RC battery connector page on my website. I'll have a link below in the description and up in the little card doodad. This is obviously going to be specifically on XT90s, but the same process would apply to anything. You know, doing this safely uh, so you don't short anything out. So EC5s are kind of a bugger to uh, get the pins out. I drive them out with a punch. Now you could cut the wiring off. That's always an option. Just make sure if you do, you only do one at a time. Obviously, if you were to cut both at the same time, you would have yourself a nice little in-hand arc welder. And yeah, you'll learn some new language when you do it. So if you are gonna cut them, just do one at a time. I don't like cutting them for two reasons. One, you're shortening the length a little bit. Granted, it's not much, but guys, we have a thing about length, right? But primarily the reason is if you cut them, you're gonna have to retin them. And as most know, this high flex silicone wire, it's not the nicest stuff to tin. It's easy to tin. It's just that it takes so much bloody solder because it's got the angel hair strands of wire in there and they just make an ideal solder wick. So if you don't have to retin it, I, uh, I find that just easier. Now there's numerous ways to get the pins out of an EC5. Now some people will heat the inside of the bullet up with a soldering iron tip to soften the plastic a little bit. They'll come out easier that way. But uh, I just use a drift punch and you know I just support it on some wooden blocks, whatever you want to use, and then just give it a hammer. Now, whatever you do, just do one at a time. You could knock the other one out, but before you do, you would want to insulate this one with heat shrink or electrical tape, just so there's no possibility the two can connect. You know, even right now, there is a bit of a short potential if this was to accidentally go in there. So uh, use whatever method you want to keep this completely safe, so there's no possibility that you can short these out. What I'm going to do is just put a little bit of masking tape over here just to ensure that there's no way this can touch. I'm just going to quickly cover what you're going to need to uh, re-solder a connector onto a battery. You're going to need, of course, a soldering tool. Now, if you don't want to spend much money, one of the best tools, in my opinion, for LiPo connectors is a Weller soldering gun. This is the 8200. They've been replaced, I think, by the 9400 or whatever. But the primary thing is you've got 140 watts of power because you're not going to solder big wire and big connectors like this with a little $20, 40 watt soldering iron. It's just not going to happen. They pull too, way too much heat. So you need something that's got fairly high wattage. So these are cheap and they work great. I'm actually going to be using my T12 soldering iron. I've done several reviews on these. These are awesome little soldering irons. They cost a little bit more than a gun, 
but they do a lot more because you can also do circuit board work with them. Now, of course, a little tip is not going to work. There's just not enough thermal mass or contact area there to do a big heat sucking wire and connector. So I'm gonna be using a D4 tip, just means the tip is four millimeters in width. This is a wedge tip. And I'm probably gonna have my uh, soldering station here set at 400 degrees Celsius. So pretty high because it's gonna be pulling a lot of heat. And then for the solder, I'm a bit of a Kester fanboy, 6040. That's all I've used both professionally and in the hobby. Now use whatever method you want to hold the wire. If you wish, you can hold it by hand. It's just easier having something to hold it with. I'm just holding it with the little helping hand things here. Now what you're gonna to wanna to do, just holding a dry iron tip onto here, you could be holding it on all day. It's not gonna melt. You're gonna need some solder on here to help conduct heat into the uh, bullet pin and the wire to melt the solder to get this bullet off. And plus they use, you know, non-leaded solder. So it, uh, putting some leaded solder in just helps it flow a little bit better. So it loosens up and there it's off. So now you've got a nice tinned end that you don't have to retin. I'm just going to apply some more leaded solder on here right now just to get it nicely saturated. Now again, using your connector of choice, again, these are XT90s, but if you were doing this with any other connector, same kind of process follows. I have um, the opposite sex connector, a male in this case, since we're doing the female ends for the battery. And I insulate the two ends and I just hold them in a little metal vise. You want something that holds it really secure. So whatever method, I just use this and make sure you get your polarity right. So XT90s are marked. There's a positive. I don't have autofocus turned on here. A negative, so we wanna do the positive. So I'm just gonna mount that in there. And then we will plug this in with the positive orientation up. And then the little insulating pin that goes on the end, we're just gonna slide that over the battery cable. And as I've said in my other soldering videos, 75 to 80% of a soldering job is in the tinning. We've already got the hardest tinning job already done, which is the wire. Again, why I don't like chopping the ends off if I don't have to. And then I'm just gonna fill the pin up here with some solder. This is tinning the inside of that pin. Not too much, you know, maybe a third full, quarter full. Just make sure it gets nice and deep inside there. Now I'm gonna put another little dollop of solder on the tip. Again, having wet solder on the tip when you apply it, it allows heat to migrate into the component you're soldering. Just makes it go a lot quicker. And we'll just hold that on the wire and let the heat migrate from the wire into the connector pin and it'll just sink in and then push forward hold it nice and still we've actually got a little bit of solder on the bottom here i don't like seeing that i'm gonna just tag that off Focus this close, not really. So yeah, there's that little blob of solder there. I'd actually like to clean that up. Probably I filled the cavity there a little too full. And if you notice the solder is getting stringy, you know, put some more solder on or put some flux on to help it flow better. But you wanna see a nice shiny connector when it's done, you know, you've got good heat migration, good tinning. So it's a nice mechanically solid connection. And again, just confirm that your polarity is right. Positive red wire. Now we'll do the negative. So again, I want to keep the short potential as low as possible. So I'm just going to snap the insulating end over that exposed 
pin on the connector. If you didn't have this type of connector, you would just wrap it with something to keep it from shorting. Now we've got to drive the negative pin out. Same idea. Remove the bullet pin off the wiring. Add a little more leaded solder to the tinned end of the wire. So now we've got a relatively high short potential because I've got to remove this insulated end to of course put over the um, black wire. That's actually why I kind of like heat shrink ends over these snap connectors, but uh, yeah, it's okay if you just take a little precaution. So I'm just going to wrap just a little bit of tape over that exposed positive just to make sure there's no chance that this can touch it. Now we've got to get the little end over top of the black wire. Clean off our soldering tip. Very important to always have a clean solder tip. Fill the cavity up a little bit, tin it. Maybe not as much as last time. Seeing that there was a little too much and it flowed out. Make sure your wires aren't twisted coming out of your battery pack. So we've the black ones at the top, red ones at the bottom. Everything looks good. Just gonna get a little clean the tip again. A little solder on the tip. Help with conducting the heat into the wire. And there it just fell in. Push the wire forward, hold it nice and still. You want to see that solder stay nice and silver. If it turns dull gray, likely means there was some mechanical movement in there and you've got a cold and brittle solder joint. Reflow it if you have to. Now let's just take a look at this real close. No drooped solder. Nice flow work there. Confirm negative, black, positive red. We'll plug in our end insulator. And that is how you change a connector on a battery. Whether you're replacing one that's worn out or if you get a pack that doesn't come with your connector of choice. And that's why I mention on my uh, website you know, soldering is one of the most useful skills you can learn in this hobby. It gives you a lot more battery options. If you're forced to buy batteries with a specific type of connector, it just, it limits options, right? So this easy little task enables me to still use XT90s on these specific Gen Zase packs, which only are available with um, EC5s. And if you want to know why I like XT90s more than EC5s, I explain it on my RC connector page. I actually lost a um, Black Shark 700 F3C fuselage due to hidden pitting in an EC5 connector. That's why I switched to XT90s and have been so happy with them since. Thanks for watching, folks, and until next time, happy LiPo connector replacement.